That's what I heard, Tommy. That's what I heard, I tell you. Frankie ain't gonna stop until he stops you. That right, chick? Well, what do you know? So Frank Stacy's bringing that feud out into the open. That's eh? what I heard. What are you gonna do about it, Tommy? Stop fluttering around. Maybe I'll be able to think. Oh, when do they call you, chick? You act more like a chicken than anybody I ever saw. A 40-year-old chicken. <laughs> hey, that's really something. Well, they don't call me chick because I act like a chicken. It's because I got a high voice. Because you're yellow, you're chicken hard. Oh, jeez. Shut boss. up. You're not my problem at the moment. What I told you about Frankie Stacy brought you down, huh? Not exactly. And it is making me think. I... I kind of got an idea he'd lay off if we'd keep away from his territory, boss. That's what's getting him so sore at you. Well, what he wants doesn't interest me. Maybe if you two guys could get together, you could work something out. You better do it fast on account of Frankie figures on knocking you off. Anyway, that's what I heard. I know that's what you heard. Chick, I think I got something. Yeah, what? Frank Stacy wants to kill me, but I'm going to see to it that he killed somebody else. I, I don't think that would exactly satisfy him. <laughs> he isn't going to have any choice in the matter. Chick, I got it. Huh? Stacy's going to murder somebody in front of witnesses. Witnesses will talk whenever I say the word. Oh, I see what you mean. You'll get Stacy to knock somebody off and then hold that over his head like. Exactly. And he'll do anything I say. Hey, I, I gotta hand it to you, Tommy. That's swell. Hey, you got somebody picked out for Frankie to knock off? Yeah, I think so. Who? Why, you, of course. <laughs> Good shot, Frankie. <laughs> it was solid, Eddie, solid. And I'm getting hep to all the angles on this billiard table of mine. I'm sharp, huh? Sure, Frankie, sure. You glad you bought the table now? Natch. Only I think I'm going to change the color. I don't like that green business. All pool tables got green, uh, whatever that is on them, Frankie. That's the reason I'm going to change the color on mine. I'm going to be different. Keen, that's me. Now back up and watch me make a massé shot. Quarter says you can't. Put up a shut up. I can't do it for both of us. My money's good. Now shut up while I try to shut. <laughs> easy money, Eddie. Easy money. We're always making easy money, ain't we? Sure, but uh, generally I'm on the collecting end, not the donating. Uh, that reminds me. Huh? Tommy Morrow is still moving in on some of our stores. Well, he won't be much longer. I'm going to take care of him and that stooge. Chick. Today, maybe. And I'll take care of him solid. I got a plan. Oh. Want me to get it, Frankie? Never mind. Yeah, Stacy talking. Frankie, this is Joey. So? So about Tommy Morrow. You better work fast, Frankie. I just heard that he's sending Chick Lewis out gunning for you. Straight tip, Frankie. Yeah, thanks, Joey. I'll remember this. What was it, Frankie? Anything important? Could be. Tommy Morrow is sending that stooge that acts like a chicken. You know, that Chick Lewis. Out to knock me off. He's sending Chick? What's he gonna do? Peck you to death? That ain't funny, Eddie. Um, I'm sorry, boss. What are you gonna do? Me? I'm gonna call Tommy and make a deal with him later. Right now, I'm gonna try and make a three-cushion shot with this billiard cue. You see why I asked you to come to my office, don't you, Vance? Well, no, Markham. To be perfectly honest, I don't. But a summons from the district attorney is a command appearance for me, so here I am. I want you to realize what'll happen if the reports I have are true. That there's a feud between Tommy Morrow and Frank Stacy, and that it's liable to flame into the open at any minute? That's right. And when that does come out into the open, there's going to be shooting. Only I don't know any way to stop it. Or perhaps you might. If I were sure that either Morrow or Stacy would wind up being killed... I wouldn't bother about it. 
We'd be much better off without them. There is a chance, though, that some innocent people might get in the way when their gang guns start. Yes, I believe that, too. There must be something you can do to prevent a murder, Vance. My talent lies mainly in solving killings, Markham. As I well know. We have one possibility of averting bloodshed in this situation. I understand that Morrow and Stacy hate each other, but that they respect each other, too. That they've arranged some sort of a conference. Find out where the conference is being held, arrest them both, and you have your solution. We have no case against either of them. Not right at the moment, that is. But I'm convinced the conference won't work out. And I'd like to prevent the bloodshed I'm sure will follow. I understand your feelings. Now, let me see. There's Tommy Morrow and his chief stooge, Chick Lewis, on one side. That's right, isn't it? Yes, Lewis is a thin, red-headed fellow. Looks more like a chicken than he does a man. On the other side is Frank Stacy and his head hoodlum, a character named Eddie the Lug. Of the Boston of the Lugs, no doubt. Uh, no doubt. <laughs> Markham, I realize your predicament, and I thank you for giving me the overall picture of the situation. So far, I haven't given you any complete picture. It's more like a negative. What do we do about advance? Nothing, I'm afraid, my friend. We'll just have to wait till we see what the negative develops. <laughs> Well, Tommy, here we are. Uh, you see any see sign of Frank Stacy? I, I don't see none. Oh, Chick, I don't see any sign of him either. But he'll be here. This meeting was his idea. You think he was on the level when he asked you to meet him? Could be, and then again, maybe this is a gag. Uh, you keep me covered all the time I walk up to meet him, and if anything happens, I'll... There's a car pulled up over there. Yeah, I see it. Two guys in there. That should be Frank Stacy and Eddie the Lug. That's you, Tommy? Yeah, Frankie. I see you brought company. You ain't exactly alone either. I didn't bring Eddie to make trouble. Just to make sure you didn't. How about meeting me halfway? Good enough. I'll take your eyes off my minute, see, can he? Don't worry, Tommy. I'll keep Frankie between his gunman and me so Eddie won't do any shooting. You just make sure Frankie doesn't make a move if he does. Don't ask questions. Let him have it. Sure. You coming or not, Tommy? Right with you. Keep your hands away from your pockets, Frankie. I'll do the same. Solid, Tommy. Okay, Frankie. This is as far as I go. You come the rest of the way. Check. Glad you decided to meet me, Tommy. I listen to propositions all the time. What's yours? Here you got your stooge chick gunning for me. What I hear is that you're a little sore at me for cutting in on you. You're supposed to be out after me. Maybe the whole thing is a misunderstanding. I wouldn't bet on that. <laughs> Natch. Now look, Tommy. This is a deal. Stay away from my territory and there'll be no trouble keep cutting in and both of us will be sorry. You'll be sorry you did it and I'll be sorry about what I have to do to you. Latch on? That's no proposition. No? No. Well, this is. We start working together. Put your territory and mine together. Run things together and split the take right down the middle. <laughs> well, part of that sounds all right. It's okay with me to do just what you say, except one thing. We split 60-40 and I get the 60 that ain't exactly fair. So sell me. People say you're tough. I guess people are right. You don't like a 50-50 deal. Somebody must have told you. Okay, Tommy. You had your chance. As far as I'm concerned, we dig each other. The meeting's over. Good enough, only let me tell you something. Tomorrow at this time, you're going to be begging for the chance at a 40% cut. Spend a little time thinking about that, Frankie. You ain't got much more than a little time left. Hey, what's the matter, Frankie? That shot was a pushover and you blew it. You nervous or something? Maybe, Eddie, maybe I am. Give me my gun. Sure, Frankie, sure. Only you're in your own house. Nobody will try to get at you here. 
You worried about Tommy Morrow? I don't want him to make his move before I'm ready to make mine. Now, let me have that gun. Sure, Frankie. Here it is. I feel better with it in my pocket. Yeah. Now maybe I can shoot little billiards. I'm gonna try this one off the rail. Two bits I make it. No bets. That gives me all the confidence I need. I'm solid now, Eddie. Plenty solid. All I needed all was... All you needed was what, Frankie? Hey, boss, it's Chick Lewis, Tommy Morrow, Stooge. That's right. And don't either of you do nothing stupid like reach him. Frankie, I got a message from Tommy for you. He says if I want to prove I'm not yellow, I'm to take my gun down to see you and let it do the talking on account of... Uh, good work, Frankie. You done it. You caught him right in the chest. So that was the gunman Tommy sent down to get me, was it? <laughs> get rid of him, Eddie. Starting to bleed all over my new billiard table. I don't like the green cloth, but... I don't think I like it red, either. In detailing my notes on the Sterling murder case, it struck me that the first incoherency was... Lance, are you busy? Oh, please come in, Markham. I was just dictating some notes to the machine so Ellen could type them up the first thing in the morning. But it can wait. Just a second now till I turn this off. Glad to see you here, Markham. Thanks. Sit down. Your face tells me somebody's been killed. I must remember to make it a little less revealing because that's exactly right, Vance. One of those two gangsters you were concerned about? No. No? No, it's one of the henchmen I told you about. Remember a fellow named Chick Lewis? Yes, he worked for Tommy Morrow. And he acted a little like a chicken, I believe you said. That's the one. We found his body dumped in a lot about an hour ago. He'd been shot. One bullet did it. What's the obvious implication? That he was sent to kill Morrow's rival, Frank Stacy, and Stacy shot first. But that's not what you're thinking. It never is. You refuse to accept the obvious ever. That's one of the reasons I came down to you right away, even before we picked up Stacy. Now, wait a minute, Markham. I never refuse to accept the obvious at any time. The point I think you were trying to make is that some things are obvious to me that aren't to other people. Nothing you've told me makes me believe that Chick Lewis was killed by anybody other than Frank Stacy. Good. That's all I wanted to know. Oh, uh, that might be for me, Vance. I left word where I was going. There's only one way I know to find out. Hello. Hello. This is Marcy Homicide. Is District Attorney Markham there? Just a moment, please. Here you are, Markham. Take the phone on the other side of the desk. I'll continue with my dictating. Good enough, Vance. Sorry I'm such a bother. Hello. To continue with my notes yes, on the Mark. Sterling murder case. What's that? The two sisters were very clever in their idea. What are you talking about? But their mistake was in trying to be cleverer well, in their be. execution of the crime than they were yes, I do. in the plan. Thank you. Lance? Yes? Lance, that call came from Sergeant Marcy in the homicide department. Yes, I know. I imagine it was something about the murder of the man who was called Chick. Correct? Yes, he just got the police laboratory report on the bloodstains on Chick Lewis's clothes. And? Vance, it wasn't human blood at all. It was chicken blood. Chick Lewis had chicken blood in his veins. Really? Well, that changes things considerably. It does? How? I said before that I didn't know any reason that it wasn't Frank Stacy who killed Chick Lewis. I've changed my mind. This is District Attorney Markham. The chicken murder case concerns the killing of Chick Lewis, henchman of gang lord Tommy Morrow. Morrow has been feuding with a rival, Frank Stacy, and it's natural to believe that Lewis was shot down by Stacy. However, when Philo Vance was informed that bloodstains found on Lewis's clothes proved to be chicken blood, he immediately formed a theory as to his murderer. I'm still in Vance's office trying to find out what it is he has... I'm not trying to be mysterious, Markham. Honestly, I'm not. In that case, you're being mysterious without trying. That's all I can say. My theory as to who killed Lewis might be entirely impractical. Yours might be right. I'd rather not go into detail at the moment. It's too possible I might be off on a tangent. You very rarely are. It's a luxury I can't afford too often. Markham, I'll make you a promise about this case. What's that? Leave my theory and me for a few hours, and I'll see to it that you're in on the finale. If I'm right. What about Stacy? 
You think I ought to pick him up? I don't know why not. That is, if you can find him. I imagine he'll go into hiding. And Markham, if I'm not right about my idea of who killed Lewis, I'm going into hiding too. Well, this thing worked out just the way I planned it. Thanks for your help, kid. It's okay, Mr. Morrow. I remember what you did. It helped me get Stacy over a barrel, and that's where I'm going to keep him to. Oh, and you can cut out that Mr. Morrow stuff, kid. Just call me Tommy. That's okay. Now, I think... Just a minute. Yeah, who is it? This is Stacy Morrow. Hiya, Frankie. You got my message to call me? That's right. What happened? You decided to get together with me and split the take two ways? Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. In fact, I was pretty sure you were ready to listen to that 60-40 deal of mine. Now. What do you mean now? Just that. Now. You knocked off a pretty good boy of mine, Chick Lewis, Frankie. Oh, I did, did I? Well, that's news to me. Of course, I heard he was dead. Got it. But, uh, you killed him. You killed him at your apartment. With my little hatchet. Get cute if you want. But I can send you up any time I like for knocking off Chick. You saw me do it, of course. I didn't. I got a little news for you. If I killed the guy, and I'm not admitting anything, you understand, I wouldn't be stupid enough to do it with anybody around. You should have made sure of that, but you didn't. Besides, you trusted the guy who saw you kill Chick. Eddie? That's right. He's working for me now. That's your story. Wait a minute. Eddie, talk to your ex-boss. Sure. Hello. That you, Frankie? That's enough. Put Tommy Morrow back on. Sure. He wants to talk to you again. <laughs> I thought he would. Okay, Frankie, what goes now? 60-40 split for me and you? Or does Eddie go to the cops? Tommy, it looks like you and I are partners. Well... Practically partners, anyhow. Feel like telling me where we're bound for, Vince? Yes, Markham, I do. I feel very much like telling you. Well, then? But I'm not going to. All I can say is that we're en route to find the murderer of Chick Lewis. You've told me that Frank Stacy can be found in his apartment, generally. That's correct. And that Tommy Morrow, who employed the dead man, operated from a store. I want very much to talk to one of those two men. I think I know where we're going in that case. You don't concede that Stacy killed Lewis, therefore you want to talk to Tommy Morrow. Is that correct? Exactly. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the store from which he operates. The shades are drawn over the store window, but I think I see some light from the inside. I'm sure you do. There's a rather strange-looking individual standing in front of the store. Yeah. A bodyguard, probably. Morrow's? It could be. No, Vance, it isn't. I recognize that man. That's Eddie the Luck. And he works for Stacy. Yes. But he's down in front of Tommy Morrow's office. This is really making sense now. It isn't to me, unless Stacy happens to be down visiting Morrow. I doubt that. Wait here a moment, will you? Do I have any choice in the matter? Mm -mm. Mm, that's what I thought. I'll wait for you. I won't be long, Markham. Going somewhere, bud? Yes, I think so. I'm going in to see Tommy Morrow. What makes you think so? Look, I don't have any time to delve into my reasoning with you. Step away from that door. <whistles> Apparently, you didn't hear me. Let me try your other ear. My name is Philo Vance. As soon as you step away from that door, I'm going in to see Tommy Morrow because I think he killed Chick Lewis. Come on, move you. Make me. All right, I will. You don't think so. I imagine you're right, Vance. You didn't need any help, did you? Not with that character. Well, as long as you're here, Markham, let's go into this store and we'll see Tommy Morrow together. What about him? Oh, leave him lying there. He's a good advertisement for me. Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, let's go. Uh, Vance, there's nobody here. There's certainly no place for anybody to be hiding. But there's a door leading out the back of this store, and I imagine that Mr. Morrow went out that way when he heard the commotion in the front. Vance, let's wait right here until you tell me something. 
You believe, apparently, that Morrow killed his own employee, Chick Lewis. You've offered me no reason for your believing that, or any motive for Morrow to kill Chick. You're absolutely correct. Oh, it's about time I was. A few moments ago, you told me that seeing Frank Stacy Stooge, Eddie the Lug, outside this store confirmed your theory. That I did. You don't tell me how or why or when this case will be over. Don't you think it's about time you parted with some information? Yes, I do. I believe, in all honesty, that this case will be over tonight. I believe that I can turn Chick Lewis's killer over to you. And what's most important, I believe I can prove everything I say. You sure he said his name was Philo Vance? Sure, I'm sure. And he was looking for you, Tommy. He knew something. I'm sure he knew something. That Vance is an awful hep character, Tommy. How about he asked you, Frankie? Well, I can tell you what I think, can I? We're partners now, ain't we? 60-40, maybe, but partners just the same. I think getting rid of Vance is a good idea. That's why we're here in front of his apartment, ain't it? That's why Eddie has his Tommy gun pointed at the window, ain't it? And I'm awful anxious to get even for that knocking around he gave me, too. Believe me, I am. A couple of shots from this gun will square things. It always does. You know, Tommy? What? You and I stop our fighting, team up together, and the first thing we do to make the partnership start is have a jam session with a Tommy gun and a guy named Philo Vance. Hey, by the way, you were pretty smart. What do you mean I was smart? Buying off Eddie here so he'd be on your side after I killed Chick. <laughs> that wasn't dumb. No, it was sharp, keen, solid. I like having a smart partner. Now, if only Vance would show his face out of that apartment house door, we could go celebrate someplace. Let him show his face. Just let him show his face. <laughs> Get Eddie getting sore. He, he's got to work himself up to shooting a guy. Well, he could make an exception in your case if you keep needling him. That ain't wrong, neither. All right, all right. I'm sorry. Hold it, Frankie. The apartment house door is opening. That's Vance in the doorway. That's Vance, all right. Pose nice and pretty. Just waiting for this. He's fallen. You got him, Eddie. Let's get this car moving. Not so fast. Don't move, you three. My what? men have this car. Surrounded. The cops! That's right. him, the district attorney. Oh, well, Mark, maybe you got us. Well, we did a lot of characters a favor knocking off Philo Vance just now. He's smart, yeah. But he could not think a machine gun bullet. If you knew how I felt about Vance, you wouldn't talk that way, Morrow. I have a good mind to take care of you three personally. And forget about the law. That's not necessary, Mark. That's, that's, that's the guy that's we killed. Right. You don't think I'd let myself be killed just to prove my theory was correct, do you, Markham? After you take these three individuals down to headquarters, I'll tell you why I wasn't killed. And how that chicken blood proved no red herring in this case. start from the beginning, Vance. I have a hunch this is going to be complicated. It isn't at all, Markham. And I think I'd better start at the end. You know now why I called you to be in front of my apartment with some policeman. Yes. You saw something that led you to believe there'd be an attack on your life because you knew too much about the Chick Lewis killing. And there was. And we heard enough while the police and I were hiding in the hedges near the gangster's car to send them all away for a long time. If not forever. Very well, then. We have that much out of the way. I'll take it from there. When I saw the men parked in front of my door, I suspected who they were, so I called you. And then fixed up a dummy to resemble me as much as possible. Then you came down, opened the street door, set the dummy up, and ducked out the back way. I gathered that. That much is true. Now you want to know how the fact that there was chicken blood on Chick Lewis's clothes proved to me that Frank Stacy didn't kill him. Before you go into that, I think I'd better tell you that Frank Stacy has already confessed to killing Lewis. Oh, I have no doubt that he thought he killed the man. What? This is what happened. Tommy Morrow wanted to get something on Stacy, so he framed the murder. He had Chick Lewis show up at Stacy's apartment, a bladder containing chicken blood underneath his coat. He had already bribed Stacy's stooge, Eddie the Lug, to put a blank cartridge in Morrow's gun. I see now, I think. Stacy fired the blank. Chick Lewis fell, and as he was falling, broke the bladder containing the chicken blood. In other words, the whole thing was staged to make Stacy think he killed Lewis. That's right. Uh -huh. So that Morrow could, in the future, dominate Stacy. But if what you say is so, Vance, that Stacy fired a blank, Lewis would still be alive. Yes, and the chances are he still would be alive if he hadn't quarreled with his boss, Morrow, after the supposed murder. 
This is pure supposition, of course, but I imagine Morrow's confession will show you I'm right. In other words, the supposedly dead Lewis was carted out of Stacy's apartment by Eddie. Lewis then went to report to his boss, but they quarreled and Morrow killed him. I'm sure that's what happened. It was the only reasonable explanation of why there was chicken blood on Chick Lewis's clothes, Markham. You remember that's what interested me in the beginning. Yes, I do. And I'll be glad to remember that this is the end of the chicken murder case. (laughs) 